you know, it's really easy for the spiritual journey to just be theoretical um, rather than uh, an experienced journey <clears throat> or one where you really connect up to your true nature <clears throat> through living your life. Uh, that hasn't been the way that the religious journey has been lived. You know, actually to our detriment, because when um, spirituality becomes theoretical, we usually get lost in our heads and things like, you know, the Spanish Inquisition <laughs> happened, you know, because it makes sense to the head that um, maybe if you're like making uh, potions out of herbs that <laughs> you're a witch. But anyway, you know, really, we, we if you look at your life, uh, you might see that actually we, we get into trouble when we're too much in our heads. And, and our culture, I think, is in trouble right now because we're too much in our heads. So that's why I'm making this video. And I'm, I'm hoping it will open doors for you. Now, I'm going to talk about my direct experience because Otherwise, you know, it will turn into a lecture. It's like a spiritual lecture. And it's just not very helpful. I think it's much more helpful to hear a story like this. And also, it's made with a lot of love that can catalyze you, help your journey. Um, yeah, we're not limited to our skin, so... Um, my energetic support comes to you, truly, because that's my intent. And at this point on my journey, you know, well, actually, all of us, if we have a really deep intent and, and we're unified around it, um, we will see real progress that way. Um, sometimes even what look like miracles. Anyway, I want to talk about my early years because we know the early years are important for children although we you know I don't think we actually act on this in the in the West we don't we don't take that careful care of our little ones but you know I guess we're doing our best right now we women are pretty overloaded anyway um, I want to talk about my early years because they were key to my journey and I will be able to um, give you some bigger information via this story. So I was the third and my mom had us in quick succession <clears throat> and um, I was a surprise. And she was really exhausted because she was running after two toddlers. She wasn't happy in her marriage and then she was pregnant with me. So she started to, late in the pregnancy, she started to um, break down, you know? So she put my older brother in the hospital, like she was a nurse, and in those days, medicine was private. So sometimes mom would do this uh, to get a holiday, <laughs> to get a bit of a break. It's sort of like a babysitting. And she really trusted hospitals because she was a, a nurse and really loved her profession. But in the in the um, hospital, uh, my brother got measles and it developed into encephalitis. So, you know, he had some afterwards, he had some uh, personality problems that come with it, like... Um, See, I've forgotten the name of, of what happens when your brain waves get to, uh, upset. Um, but he would he would have these periods, and and as a little kid, um, and even older, he was prone to violence. He would get one of the epileptic, ep kind of a real epileptic fit, and suddenly, you know, um, he would just uh, start. Actually, he would just walk up to me sometimes and punch me. But anyway. See, so I was born in this time. And then, so my mom had a new baby, and then she had this toddler come back from the hospital who had had a personality change because of the encephalitis, and he was on heavy medication. And my mom still was in this 
breakdown that never got a chance to heal because, you know, she lurched into a crisis. So I was <clears throat> born to this situation and my, my brother really punched me out as a little kid, uh, very, uh, you know, pretty often. It's, I never knew <clears throat> when it was going to happen. <clears throat> Uh, I would just come around the corner and he would be in this violence and he would just slam me. So it was a little bit like a war zone. But um, now the reason I know it is like this is because when I studied with the Hawaiian kahuna, Abraham, we were doing this body work. You see, I didn't know any of this. I just felt underneath that there was something really the matter with me, that I had a real distress underneath. And I, I kind of ran from it, really. I, I really ran from it. I was conscious of, you know, steering away from it because it just felt like a total inner chaos in there somewhere. And it was exactly that because, you know, I nursed from this woman who, she was in emotional chaos. So through the body work, this material surfaced. So all of a sudden, I felt like what it was to be in my crib with my brother putting his arms through and pounding my body or you know also with my mom and I I I remembered like through the body work I I could feel her like one of the things that happens when you have a breakdown is you your muscle coordination goes so she held me and she would have my head flopping all over or, and, and sometimes she even forgot about me. Now, all this came up from the body work through incredible experience of emotional pain that was just beyond desperate. And it was how my little child was feeling. Now, to my mom's credit, my mom developed into a, a noble, you know, noble woman, really. So when I went to, you know, in my 30s, I... I, I brought her this material. I said, Mom, like, was it like that for me? And she said, to her great credit, she said, yes. So I had a place to build in truth. Now, the other thing, okay, and the reason I'm so grateful for her to say yes is because I had a client and material came up from her body, which was very distressing about her early childhood, and she took it to her mom and her mom said, I can't remember. So that left my uh, client uh, not being validated and it made it very hard for her to build her healing. Um, yeah. So I, I was really lucky. The other thing that happened in my childhood was my little brother was born when I was seven. I just turned seven. Now, I had a when he was rolled in, you know, into baby carriage back in those days, you know, sort of that English style and you lie in it and he was put in the living room and I came roaring down the stairs to meet him and I looked at him and I had this full blown kind of encounter with my own soul. It's like that child to me was like the Christ child. It was, it was just like the Christ child. And I felt this incredible kind of warmth and compassion coming through my body and this expansion. It was just, it was just unbelievable. And, you know, indeed, I mean, it, the way it worked out is I, I became a second mother. And, and uh, you know, at seven and eight, I would be making his bottles. I would get up in the middle of the night. I would hear him. My mom would sleep right through it. I'd get up, make him his bottle, bring his bottle. Like, you know, this isn't the way a seven-year-old normally behaves. It 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 really was a, a real soul encounter I experienced. And that actually gave me the basis for my healing work. One of the things I heard when I was in India was that lots of times teachers will have an encounter with soul energy, you know, either on their own or through somebody before they're eight. And that, what that does is 
in the years after that, the child, well, you can never run from it. I could never repress it. <laughs> I tried, believe me. But I could never repress this, this soul knowledge I had and this knowledge of truth and it would just be in my body and I, and I couldn't. I couldn't do anything about it. So anyway, so, okay, so the universe or my soul gave me this choice. I had two very different conditionings. I had one conditioning that was like a war zone, really emotionally. It was very hard, you know, very unsafe for a little kid. I was, I was really neglected and battered. <laughs> anyway, then I had this expansion of soul. So when I grew up, I had this, um, this conditioning would come up from the hard part of my childhood, which was very dark and very scared and terrible, but I could never quite buy into it, or I was always aware I had a choice because of my experience with my brother, and indeed that soul expansion may have happened just because I was so kind of hurt in my early years that I was just so wounded. I just opened to my brother. I opened to any little bit of love I could find. All through my life, there's been this choice about which which side I I side with, and you know I obviously sided with the soul energy. But then what happened? And part of the reason it's taken me so long to get anywhere in the journey was all this really deep, deep sorrow and pain came up. But you know what? It's all healable. It it was all. You know, the fear was just, all the fear and the storylines I had, it's just smoke and mirrors. Because this, this whole world is just love. We're love. We're made out of love. We don't feel like it because this judgment that we have of ourselves and others, you know, that we walk around with and we're, we're scared of our own light. I mean, one of the things I'm, I'm, when I'm working with people, it's like, and they're scared about something and I'll tell them, you know, really, you're scared of how loving you are, how infinitely loving you are. And it doesn't make sense to the head. It only makes sense when you, you know, travel on the journey and you have these experiences. Now, one of the things that I encourage people is the use of sound on the YouTube you know you can get sounds at different vibrations and there's some vibrations that will help your heart open and you can do that for yourself and listen to them a lot yeah yeah and a, you know a psychologist a really compassionate psychologist or psychiatrist or or coach could be, you know, useful if they're really compassionate. I could never really find one, which is why I hung up with the shamans and the, you know, the masters, because I, I, I couldn't find one who was compassionate enough for, for me that I could feel really got me. You know, the thing is, if you really decide to heal, you will. What will happen is the universe will will set up your curriculum immediately and you'll get all the support you need. It, you know, it might not feel like it's enough. <laughs> but it probably certainly won't. Um, but, you know, there's always prayer. You can always pray. And really, you, you, you the guardian angels are real. I mean... You know, thank God for, like, Irish, Scottish people because they see them. <laughs> that helps. You know, but they are there. And, uh, you know, I know I sound like a flake, but, like, actually, the truth of life is so sweet and it's so loving. And it's just where we get where our own distrust and our own judgment of ourselves and others and when you know our own closed hearts you know so you know keep focusing on compassion and
do the things that make you become the best person you can be. And bless your hearts, my, my love's always coming to you. And I, I know it helps. It won't feel like it's enough, but it will help. <laughs> okay, okay, bless your hearts.